Good morning, beautiful souls. Here's a general reading for the collective. Of course, only take what resonates, leave what doesn't. You're responsible for your actions and reactions to these readings. We start off with the Ace of Hearts, which is cups in regular playing cards. And what I heard channeling was, do what you desire. You can have it all, but be mindful of trying to do it or have it all at once. So what I want you to notice is in each of the bento boxes, you see similar ingredients, but then you also see a couple of new added ones. Some of you are this or that type of people. It's like, it has to be this way or that way. We go here or we go there. And what the, what the divine is channeling for you is you can actually have a bit of each you know, take a little bit from here, take a little bit from there. You can have everything, but you might need to spread it out. So some of you guys, while you're this or that type of people, you're also overworkers. Like you overstress yourself, overwork yourself. I was seeing parents and different people just having tasks after tasks after tasks to do. And this is saying what you're missing right now is tapping into your imaginative side and feeling emotionally fulfilled because you keep feeling like while you're overworking on one hand, you have to have things this way or that way. There must be a routine. Even if that routine is stressful, there has to be something that is super repetitive. You're kind of attached to being repetitive. Now on one hand, doing something in repetition is good because it helps you to learn it. It helps you to have muscle memory for it. But again, you don't want to be attached to that meaning that as you walk throughout life, you can only experience something this way or that way. You can learn the lessons that you need to by opening yourself up to all the different possibilities of how to experience something and still taking time to rest in between those things. So even though in this case, the bento boxes are being prepared for her and others let's say they were all hers instead of her going mm, which one do i take she could have been like you know what i'm gonna take a little bit from this one and a little bit from that one and that'll be my breakfast or my lunch or she could say this one's breakfast this one's lunch this one's dinner and spread it out so it's a little bit of everything or spreading it out then we hop into the joker card which i don't normally like calling the fool's card the fool but it just simplifies it for everybody but the joker is the fool card and what i heard was extend the olive branch now this was to the inner child and your spirit babies but for many of you it, it was solely the inner child connection here it's not that everyone has had a traumatic dramatic childhood some people have had a very uneventful childhood and so what happens is what the two of pentacles was giving me energy of i was seeing either big sisters or like brothers or moms and dads running around and the kids had stuff to do it was like one kid has soccer to go to one kid has ballet one kid has basketball one has this one has that one's in band and it's like there's literally a schedule for these children and what happens is okay let's say everybody has an event on the same day or in the same week and two of them are on the same day now you're running around like a chicken with your head cut off, trying to get everything prepared, trying to spend a little bit of time at this one's recital, a little bit of time at that one. <laughs> like It's just too much. But why are the kids in, in so many activities? Well, for many of you, it's because in your inner child, your childhood, you couldn't experience all of that. You could, you could say, oh, well, I grew up in a neighborhood where our schools didn't have those opportunities, blah, 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 yakety yak. The bottom line is you are placing upon your children what you feel you didn't have. And you need to ask yourself, are you taking time to find out if it's what they want though? And if it is what they want, are you getting them too used to this routine of go, 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 go? Do they have a moment to just digest the information they're taking in? Do they have time to enjoy? Because that's the thing missing for a lot of you. That's another reason you're being told to connect to the inner child. You're not enjoying joy, fulfillment through joy. It's missing or it's lacking a bit. So some of you do work that you love 
or you're participating in activities that you love, but you're not really feeling inspired right now. And you're being told it's because you're not connecting to the imagination of the inner child, to the creativity of the inner child, which automatically brings in new emotional fulfillment. And that's what the Ace of Hearts is all about. That newness when it comes to emotions and imaginative. And, and inspiration as well. Even though wands didn't come out here, it all ties into inspiration. It all ties into realizing that your life, your existence itself is the spark of purpose. You are the purpose. I keep telling you guys that. You are the purpose of your life. Everything else that you choose to do is an expression. It's that branch reaching out. And I saw someone looking at like a really, and this of course might've been in a dream for some of you, but you were looking at this really like ridiculously tall tree. You could also have tall trees where you live. And it was like, you were always afraid of climbing this tree, but you always wanted to climb the tree. But there were so many unknowns at the top of that tree. Would there be a branch that was thick enough to rest upon? If you got tired, would it break? Would this happen? Would that happen? And if you notice, Totoro and the girls are just like sitting in the tree eating cookies. They're not concerned <laughs> with you know, all of the, the stresses, the way they're looking at life right now is like, we're going to enjoy this moment. There are beings that exist within and without time. There are some beings that don't exist in any concept of time. It's not that they can't comprehend it. They just don't live in the restrictions of it, which means every day, every moment, every second of their existence is going through a change. This is what we're evolving into. We're going through stages to eventually evolve into that setting. Now, to most human beings, that sounds like utter chaos. To be in a world where something changes every day, you already are. You just don't pay attention to the changes because you've gotten used to seeing everything from one viewpoint. But when you sit on top of, when you sit on top of that tree, whether it's day or night, and in this case, there's a lot of energy around the full moon. You're looking at the world not to look down on it, but to have a different level view. In the full card, most of the time, he's always at a cliff. And think about that view for a second. Whether it's a really deep fall, why focus on the fall when you can focus on the view before you? How many things, how many unknown things are just vast and wide out before you? This is what opportunity feels like. It feels like looking at all of this land just laid out before you knowing that you can go in either direction. It doesn't matter. What really matters is that you have the strength and the, the willingness to go forward and that you're excited about it. The more excited you're about the journey, the more you manifest the magic. And that's why the fool just goes about his way, looking up at the sky. He, that's what's really capturing his eye when he's about to walk off the cliff, is that vastness. Like, look at all these opportunities. Look at all this open land. Look at all this open space, this sacred space. And when you tap into the inner child, you are tapping into a sacred space. Some of you don't realize that your inner child carries guilt. Guilt that manifests itself in your physical incarnation. So what is that? Well, your current physical incarnation. What does that mean? Well, when you were a child, there were things that you could have done but didn't do. There were experiences you wish you had but didn't have. And as you get older, whether you realize it or not, you're pretty much guilt tripping that inner child. You're making them feel responsible for why something couldn't happen. You could have had parents that divorced. You, this could be something triggering for you guys, but you could have had that happen. You blamed yourself when really that's between A and B. You should see your way out of it. But because you're a part of the family dynamic, you figure, well, maybe it's because I was born. Maybe it was, this is just what's channeling in. People take on different traumas and responsibilities for different reasons. You might've had someone blame you for the reason something happened. But if you were to go back and play the actions in your mind, you're like, there's no way I could have participated in that. I wasn't uh, bad or unruly. I didn't do this. I didn't do that. But at the same time, you still blame the inner child for not knowing better. You blame your teen years for feeling like you had to live up to a certain standard. And you begin to play these out in your adult form. If you notice in that two of diamonds card, the two of pentacles card, it's pouring rain. Most people look at rain as like dreary, dull, or scary because it's lightning and thunder, but rain's real purpose is to cleanse. It's a cleansing experience. It's to also match the emotion. So if you're angry and it's thundering outside, tap into, but why am I angry? Allow for the thunder to take the anger away. If you're outside in the rain and you want to cry, allow the rain to wash it away. But understand, 
when it washes it away, it's washing it away. You can't keep revisiting it. You can't keep clinging to it. You can't go, oh, I let it go, but I'll never forget. Oh, I let it go, but I'll never get over it. Then you ain't let nothing go. And if you notice, she's wiping the mud off of the little sister, like she's cleaning her up. So this is like saying going within and cleaning up all of the gook and blame and guilt that's been placed upon the inner child. This is something your spirit babies are also channeling in because with Totoro-kun, the two kids sitting on the branch felt like a mixture between representing you, but also representing some of you guys' spirit babies. I also feel like a, a, it's very important for you to meditate before the full moon. Do a meditation that centers in on inner child. I might have to start making some type of stuff for, for y'all when it comes to that. But you can also do this by being playful. You have inactive and active meditation. And being active with the conscious awareness of why you're doing it is another form of meditation. So watch some cartoons. Don't get into the politics about what the cartoon means. Be a kid again. Watch it. Observe the lessons that might come in it. You know, that's what kids do. Kids naturally absorb lessons whether you realize they're doing it or not. And that's the real reason that we have such a nostalgic feeling when it comes to certain shows. Like, you might want to watch this anime. It'll be very moving and powerful for you. D just go outside and play. Run around. If you have kids, play with the kids, but play with your kids like a big kid. Really allow yourself to have fun. Play some video games. It's not about getting so absorbed in it that you still can't do your real work or whatever but even when you're doing work how can you make work fun how can you make it more expressive and allow yourself that opportunity to do so if you got to pause pause play put bubbles in your bath water and play with the bubbles like you're five again there's different ways to connect to the inner child and cleanse out all of that speak with that inner child let that inner child know that you've forgiven them and that you ask for forgiveness and feel yourself being forgiven by your inner child because that's another thing people can carry. They can carry this belief system that, well, if I took the inner child and separated it from my body, it would hate me for all the stuff that I've been doing lately or all the stuff I didn't do then. Allow for forgiveness to come in to that situation. A lot of you are juggling a lot of things. You multi, like I said, you multitask a lot. And this is about as, as multifaceted as you may be. This is about gaining balance and taking time to know when to rest. That will help you to move forward. When we get into the Six of Swords, I heard coming home or now you're home. For some of you, it was coming home. For others, it was now you're home. But home isn't a place necessarily. For some of you, it may feel like that, but it's really not a place. It's a sacred space within yourself and feeling like you're being greeted at the door. And the person greeting you is excited, like, you're ready for this trip. You're, you're ready for this mental move forward. You're ready for this physical move forward. What, whatever it may have to be for you, but for many of you, I feel like it's deeply spiritual. For me, wands and swords are the in-between world. If pentacles is earth, if cups can be considered the spiritual planes for a second because emotions are very tied into spiritual energy in motion, then swords would be that creative space of actually solidifying a thought between it being just a spiritual emotion or inspiration into being a physical thing that's tangible that you can touch. It's like the blueprint. Swords is like creating the blueprint. So the six of swords is like allowing yourself to move forward and creating the blueprint of that sacred space. And that leads you to that emotional fulfillment. If you notice in the 10 of hearts, the other one's sleep and it looks like she really doesn't want to wake up. It's like wake up the inner child so that you can truly wake up your full being. This is no longer about seeing yourself as all these different sections, but accepting yourself as one whole being. There's so many different levels to consciousness, but taking it all, absorbing it all and realizing and accepting the fact that you are all of it as above, so below. You don't need to worry about this or that because you're already made up of a little bit of everything. You're not just all skin. You're not just all hair. You're not just all physical being. You're not just all in physical being. You're everything. You're everything. You're an embodiment of everything. So allow yourself to feel that and allow those emotions to come through. And then you'll start feeling so good. It might feel like a dream you don't want to wake up from, but you'll realize that your dream is now your reality. You're no longer just daydreaming about things. I saw 11, 11. I saw 14, 14. Then we get into this beautiful crystal card, which says actually funny enough, Busy times, multitasking. Take charge of your schedule during this time, during this busy time, and honestly assess your underlying reasons for being so 
busy. So if you're finding yourself working to the bone, why are you doing it? Take time to really assess it and allow yourself breathing space. And that, my loves, was your reading. I have to finish it quick because, you know, 15 minute limit. Peace, love and light, beautiful souls.